Sidney Crosby was born on August 7, 1987, in Halifax, Nova Scotia, to parents Troy and Trina. He grew up in the community of Coal Harbor, which is also the home of Nathan McKinnon. Sid's father was a goalie for the Junior Canadians in the QMJHL. He had a solid junior career, helping his team win the 1985 QMJHL Championship and appearing in the 1985 Memorial Cup. He was drafted 240th overall by the Habs in 1984, but never played in the NHL. As a kid, Sid idolized Steve Eiserman, and like his father, cheered for the Montreal Canadiens. His hockey journey began at the age of two, alone in the basement, where he fired pucks into a net beside the family dryer, which has become the most famous home appliance in hockey history. The irony of the Crosby family's famous dented dryer, now in the Nova Scotia Sports Hall of Fame, is that it's a symbol of his misses, and not his successes as a young player. When he appeared on the Jay Leno show, Jay got Crosby to shoot pucks into a dryer, but Sid later confirmed that the dents in his parents' dryer are actually evidence of the times he missed the net. According to Sid, the only reason his mom let him shoot pucks with the dryer in harm's way was because it kept working despite the dents. As a kid, he'd spend rainy days in the basement with friends, skating around on rollerblades, and firing pucks at the net. Early in his minor hockey years, Sid attracted media attention for his outstanding play, giving his first interview when he was seven. As he tore through his minor hockey seasons in Cole Harbor, Sid's name grew, and along with fame, came the ugly side of hockey. By the time he was 11, opposing team's parents were jeering Crosby to the point of tears. And in Pee Wee, an opponent tried to break Sid's leg by swinging his stick at him between whistles. By the start of the 2000-2001 season, Sid had turned 13 and was eligible to play bantam hockey. But before the Cole Harbor AAA bantam team opened their tryouts, he had an opportunity to see how he stacked up against midget level players. The Dartmouth Subway's AAA midget team was holding training camp, and coach Brad Crossley invited Sid to join. But just three days into his stint with the midget team, the local hockey council brought down the hammer, threatening the coach with disciplinary action if he continued to let Crosby practice with the subways. Alongside his parents and coach Crossley, Sid met with the council to appeal the decision, but it didn't go well, as the council had no intention of allowing him to play midget hockey. In a letter to the Crosby family, the local council said they recognized Sidney's talent, but didn't believe it was in the best interests of his growth and development to play with older players. But the Crosbys weren't easily deterred, and mounted an appeal to Hockey Nova Scotia, which eventually escalated to the Crosbys seeking a court order. Members of the local hockey community rallied around the Crosbys, making the case that not only could Sid handle midget hockey, but that he would dominate at the midget level. During the court case, Sid was barred from playing hockey, and sat on the sidelines, while his parents and community tried to convince Hockey Nova Scotia to let him play midget hockey. After six weeks, the decision came that Crosby wouldn't be permitted entry into the midget league, and would instead return to his bantam team. After a month and a half without playing a game, Sid played in the Bridgewater Bantam Tournament, where he scored 20 points in five games, and led the Cole Harbor Red Wings to a championship. His dominant play at Bridgewater was blatant evidence that Sidney had progressed past bantam hockey, but hockey politics kept him from playing at a suitable level. His parents were furious, but Crosby took the ruling in stride. When he showed up for his first practice after the court decision, his coach Paul Gallagher took Sidney aside to make sure he was okay. Crosby looked back at his coach, told him it was all good, and said he'd already turned his focus to helping the team win the tournament. Despite the previous year's battle, Sidney was approved to play midget hockey as a bantam-aged 14-year-old. Though he was small, and the youngest player on the team, he was confident in his ability to play with 15 to 17 year olds. And his confidence turned out to be well founded, as he ransacked his opponents for 193 points in 74 games. At Canada's National Midget Tournament, he was the top scorer and named tournament MVP, finishing the tournament with 11 goals and 13 assists in 7 games. Sid was also called up to play two games with the Junior A Truro Bearcats, the team who drafted him in the 2001 Junior A draft when he was 13. At the midget level, dads who were angry about the way Crosby overshadowed their sons would yell about breaking his neck and how he was going to get killed. During games, Sid found himself slashed, punched, and hammered from behind. These incidents were one reason the family decided he should leave the country, so at 15 years old, he shipped out to Shattuck St. Mary's boarding school in Minnesota, where he played for the 2002-2003 season. In 57 games, Crosby recorded 72 goals and 162 points, helping the team win a U18 AAA National Championship. In the 2003 QMJHL Draft, Sid was drafted first overall by the Ramuski Oceanic. Before starting his career in the Q, Crosby represented Canada for the first time internationally at the 2003 U18 Junior World Cup. He was the youngest player on the team, having turned 16 just days before the tournament. After seven consecutive gold medals, Canada went home without a medal at the 2003 tournament, after losing the bronze medal game to the Czechs by a score of 8-2. 
Despite his team's difficult tournament, Sid performed well, scoring four goals and six points in five games. A few weeks later, Crosby recorded eight points in his first preseason game with the Oceanic, leading his teammates to nickname him Daryl, in reference to Daryl Settler's 10-point game with the Maple Leafs. He carried the momentum into his first regular season game, when he scored a hat trick during an eight-minute stretch in the third period, as the Oceanic rallied for a 4-3 win. He was named QMJHL Player of the Week for two consecutive weeks at the start of the season, and won the honor four more times as the season progressed. That December, Sid was named to Canada's World Junior Team, joining Jay Bollmeister, Jason Spezza, Eric Lindros, and Wayne Gretzky as the fifth 16-year-old to make the team. At the tournament, he became the youngest player to score a goal in its history, a record later broken by Alex Barkov. Crosby finished the tournament with two goals and three assists in six games, helping Canada win the silver medal after they lost on a heartbreaking play. He returned to the queue to finish his rookie season, during which he was held off the score sheet in just 6 of 59 contests, and finished the year with 135 points, including 54 goals and 81 assists, which ranked third all-time by a QMJHL rookie. His outstanding season earned him CHL honors in three categories, including Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, as well as Top Scorer. During the offseason, a revamp of the World Hockey Association was proposed to compete with the NHL during the 2004-2005 lockout. At the WHA draft, Crosby was selected first overall and offered a three-year, $7.5 million contract. But he turned down the offer, electing to return to Ramuski for his NHL draft year. Entering the season as the most hyped CHL prospect since Eric Lindros, Crosby didn't let the pressure get to him as he recorded 168 points, including 66 goals and 102 assists in 62 games, which also included a 37-game point streak. He also returned to play for Canada at the World Juniors, this time recording 6 goals and 3 assists to help Canada win gold. After the tournament, an Air Canada baggage handler stole the jersey Crosby wore in the gold medal game. He was caught and fired, and the jersey was eventually recovered from a mailbox. In the end, the jersey was auctioned off for $22,000, with the proceeds going to youth hockey charities, as well as a South Asian Tsunami Relief Fund. When Sid returned to the queue, Ramuski put together a 35-game unbeaten streak and won the President Cup, with Crosby earning playoff MVP honors. At the 2005 Memorial Cup, Sid led the tournament with 11 points and helped Ramuski reach the championship game, where they fell to arguably the best junior team ever assembled in that year's London Knights. Crosby once again earned CHL honors as Player of the Year and top scorer, becoming the only player to win Player of the Year honors in back-to-back -back seasons. The 2005 NHL Draft was coined the Sidney Crosby sweepstakes, as Sid was unanimously declared a generational talent. Scouts were blown away by his vision, passing, quick release, and off-the-charts hockey sense, and were certain that drafting Crosby would immediately improve the fortunes of their franchise. Due to the lockout, positioning for the 2005 draft was determined by a weighted lottery based on each team's playoff appearances and draft lottery victories in the last four years. After a full season without NHL hockey, the Crosby sweepstakes were the perfect event to bring back fan engagement. With just 10 teams left in the lottery, it looked like Crosby might begin his NHL career on Canadian soil. The Vancouver and Ottawa were eliminated when the next two envelopes were drawn, and the Habs finished fifth last as the final Canadian team to lose out. It came down to the Ducks and the Penguins, with Mario Lumu ultimately gaining a new teammate, an heir apparent in Pittsburgh. Sid the Kid made his NHL debut on October 5, 2005 against the Devils, and registered an assist in a 5-1 loss. He scored his first NHL goal in the Penguins' home opener against the Bruins, and despite adding two assists for a three-point night, the Pens fell 7-6 in overtime. Later that week, the jersey Sid wore in his first NHL game disappeared from his father's luggage. When Sid's dad arrived in Buffalo from Pittsburgh, he noticed his checked bag was partially unzipped and the jersey was missing. Fortunately, much like Sid's World Juniors jersey, the Penguins jersey turned up in a stairwell at the Pittsburgh airport. Sid started his rookie season playing alongside Lumio until Mario was forced to retire due to an irregular heartbeat just 26 games into the season. Midway through the season, Penguins head coach Eddie Olchik was fired and replaced by Michelle Therrien, who designated Crosby as an alternate captain. The move drew criticism from Don Cherry, who called Crosby a hot dog and said he didn't have enough experience to be an alternate captain in the NHL. He also criticized Sid for yapping at the referees, calling him the golden boy. Crosby wasn't phased by Cherry's comments, noting that people were going to have their opinions, and good or bad, he didn't think about them either way. Although hopes were high in Pittsburgh for Crosby's arrival to immediately translate to team success, the Penguins still finished last in the Eastern Conference. Nevertheless, Crosby's first NHL campaign was a personal success, as he became the youngest player in NHL history to crack 100 points, finishing with 102, good for 6th in the league, and a Pittsburgh rookie record. 
In addition to leading his team in points, Crosby topped the Pens with 39 goals, 63 assists, 16 power play markers, 5 game winners, and 278 shots. Throughout the season, Crosby and Alex Ovechkin went head-to-head -head for the lead in rookie scoring. Sid finished second to Ovi's 106 points, with the Caps forward also taking home the Calder as Rookie of the Year. It was the beginning of a rivalry that would help define the league for over a decade. Throughout his first season, Crosby was accused by fans, opposing players and coaches, of taking dives and complaining to officials, which was typically attributed to his youth. He became the first rookie to earn 100 penalty minutes and 100 points in the same season, which magnified his reputation for complaining to NHL officials. Kelly Rudy pointed out that Gretzky had a similar reputation as a whiner in his youth, and suggested that Crosby would mellow out as he matured, and his reputation would fade. That offseason, Sid joined Team Canada at the World Championships, where he became the youngest player to lead the tournament in scoring, with 8 goals and 8 assists in 9 games. Despite his performance, Canada failed to medal, as they were shut out by Finland 5-0 in the bronze medal game. Even though his team came home empty-handed, Sid was named the tournament's top forward. That summer, Sid purchased his first home, located on Grand Lake in Halifax, while during the hockey season, he continued living with Mario Lemieux and his wife Natalie, as well as their four children. In his second NHL season, Crosby built on his rookie success. Early in 2006-2007, he scored his first NHL hat trick in an 8-2 win over the Flyers. And a month and a half later, he lit up the Flyers again, recording a goal and five assists for the first six-point game of his career. He grabbed hold of first place in the scoring race, and never looked back, with his 120 points making him the youngest scoring champion in any major North American professional sport in history. The Penguins also improved as a team, as Calder Trophy winner Evgeny Malkin and runner-up Jordan Stahl helped Crosby lead the team to their first playoff berth since 2001. In the playoffs, Sid had 5 points in 5 games, as the Pens fell 4-1 to the Senators, who went on to lose in the Stanley Cup Finals. That offseason, Crosby was named team captain, making him the youngest captain in NHL history. And at the NHL Awards, he took home the Hart Trophy, the Lester B. Pearson Award, and the Art Ross. He was the youngest player in NHL history to win the Pearson, and the second youngest to win the Hart, behind only Wayne Gretzky. With Sid's initial entry-level contract set to expire at the end of the next season, the Pen signed him to a five-year deal. They settled on $43.5 million, because the annual average was $8.7 million, which corresponded to his number 87, and his birthday of August 7th. Crosby generously allowed them some wiggle room, so the Pens would have the cap space to re-sign Malkin and Stahl. Midway through 2007 to 2008, Sid had his first NHL fight in a 5-4 win over the Bruins. He fought Andrew Ference and completed the Gordie Howe hat trick with a goal and two assists. Another highlight of the season was the Winter Classic, where Crosby scored the shootout winner against the Sabres. But two and a half weeks later, Sid suffered a high ankle sprain against the Lightning. After missing 21 games, he came back and played in three games, but realized his ankle was still sore and decided he needed more time for it to heal. Despite playing just 53 games, he still recorded 24 goals and 48 assists for 72 points. Sid's injury also gave Malkin an opportunity to step to the forefront, as he finished second in league scoring to Obi. Crosby returned in time for the playoffs, where the Pens faced the Senators for the second straight year. This time, the Pens won in four straight, before going on to defeat the Rangers and Flyers in five games each, to reach the finals for the first time since 1992, where they faced the Red Wings. After being shut out as a team for the first two games of the finals, Crosby scored the first two goals of Game 3, as the Pens got themselves back in the series with a 3-2 victory back home in Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, the Penguins lost the next game, and despite staving off elimination in Game 5, they were overcome by the Wings in six games. Crosby finished the playoffs with 27 points, tying Conn Smythe winner Henrik Zetterberg for the playoff scoring lead. After the tough playoff loss, Sid entered 2008-2009 on a mission, and surpassed 100 goals, 200 assists, and 300 points in a game against the Leafs. Malkin's assist on Crosby's goal also happened to be his 200th point, so Sid had the trainer cut the puck in half, so both players could commemorate their achievements. Sid finished the year with 33 goals and 70 assists for 103 points, while Malkin captured the Art Ross with 113 points. In the first round of the playoffs, the Penguins defeated the Flyers in six games, setting up a second round matchup with the Capitals. The series took center stage, as it pitted Ovi against Crosby and Malkin, who finished the regular season as the three top scorers in the league. In the series opener, Crosby and Ovi both scored, with the Capitals taking the game by a score of 3-2. In Game 2, both players recorded their first career playoff hat tricks, with the Caps taking the game 4-3.
Despite falling behind two games to none, Crosby and the Penguins reeled off three victories in a row. After losing Game 6, the Penguins defeated the Caps in Game 7, with Crosby scoring two goals in the decisive game. Following a sweep of the Hurricanes, the Pens met the Wings in the finals for the second straight postseason. Like the previous year, the Pens fell behind two games to none. But this time, Sid and the boys stormed back to tie the series at two. The Wings dominated Game 5, and it looked like they were destined to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. But the Penguins stayed alive in Game 6, setting up a decisive Game 7 back in Detroit. With the Penguins clinging to a 2-1 lead, Crosby was forced to watch all but 32 seconds of the third period from the bench, after suffering a knee injury on a hit from Johan Franzen. The Penguins closed out the game with a gritty 2-1 win for the ages, capped off by a spectacular save by Marc-Andre Fleury. After the game, Crosby hoisted and kissed the most famous trophy in sports, just how he pictured it as a kid in Cole Harbor. At 21 years and 10 months old, Crosby became the youngest captain to win the Stanley Cup since 1895, and on his 22nd birthday, he brought the Stanley Cup back to his hometown. He began the day by addressing hundreds of members of the Canadian military and their families at the Halifax Dockyard. He then led a parade through Cole Harbor, where thousands of people showed up for a series of events, including a concert by Sam Roberts. Later that summer, Crosby was named to the Canadian roster as an alternate captain for the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver, after having been left off the roster in 2006. At the Olympics, Sid scored the shootout winner in the second game of the preliminary round against Switzerland. And in the medal round, after going pointless against Russia and Slovakia, Crosby came through in the gold medal game, scoring the iconic golden goal in overtime against the United States. Upon returning to the NHL for the rest of the 2009-2010 season, Crosby tied Steven Stamkos for the league lead with 51 goals, earning his first rocket Richard. He also recorded 58 assists for a total of 109 points, enough to finish tied for second in points. Sid also won the Marc Messier Leadership Award, and was included on the NHL's All-Decade Second Team of the 2000s. Looking to defend their title, the Penguins took down the Senators in six games in Round 1, setting up a matchup with the Habs in Round 2. The series was a back and forth affair, with the teams trading wins through the first six games. In Game 7, the Habs jumped out to a 4-0 lead, and didn't look back, winning the decisive game by a score of 5-2. Crosby finished the playoffs with 6 goals and 13 assists in 13 games. Game 7 marked the final game at Mellon Arena, and that July, Crosby and Lumi were the first to skate on the ice at the new arena. That offseason, Sid signed the richest endorsement deal in NHL history with Reebok, reported to have paid him $1.4 million a year for 5-7 to seven years. He also inked deals with Gatorade Bell and Tim Hortons. Early in 2010-11, Crosby had a 25-game point streak, during which he recorded 27 goals and 24 assists. During the streak, Sid scored his 200th goal against Mika Kiprasov in a 4-1 win over the Flames. But Crosby's season was derailed in January when he suffered hits to the head in consecutive games. First by David Steckel in the Winter Classic, and four days later by Victor Hedman in a game against the Lightning. After dealing with serious concussion symptoms, Crosby didn't return for the rest of the season and missed the 2011 playoffs where the Penguins lost in seven games to Tampa. Despite missing 41 games, Sid finished the season with 66 points, but there was concern the head injuries would permanently alter the trajectory of his career. These concerns escalated when he missed the first 20 games of 2011-12 with lingering concussion symptoms. He made his return in late November, scoring two goals and two assists in a 5-0 win over the Islanders. But after just seven games, his concussion symptoms returned, possibly after David Krejci elbowed him in the head. He finally returned again in March, recording an assist in a 5-2 win over the Rangers. Despite playing just 22 games, Sid finished the season with 8 goals and 29 assists for 37 points. He was in the lineup for the Penguins' first round series against the Flyers. The series had a lot of hype surrounding it, but the Flyers shocked everyone by winning the first three games. They outscored the Penguins 20-12, including an 8-4 victory in Game 3, in which the teams combined for 158 minutes in penalties. Crosby was criticized for his conduct during the game and his post-game interview. People were wondering what he was thinking when he spent a critical playoff game causing trouble. He swatted away Jakob Voracek's glove, grabbed a hold of Kimo Timonen, and wrestled with Claude Giroux. When asked about the incidents, he told the media he didn't like anyone on the Flyers. I don't like any guy on their team there, so his glove was near me, went to pick it up, and I pushed it. So, yeah, that's... Because what, I'm sorry? I don't like him. Why don't you like him? Because I don't like him. They I don't, do like, something I mean I don't like any guy on their team. Facing elimination in Game 4, Crosby bounced back with a three-point night, leading the Penguins to a dominant 10-3 victory. And back in Pittsburgh for Game 5, the Penguins won 3-2, sending the series back to Philly for Game 6. 
But the comeback attempt came up short, as the Flyers eliminated the Pens with a 5-1 win, with Sid finishing the series with three goals and five assists. That offseason, Crosby signed a 12-year extension with the Penguins. His superstitious nature and desire to win another cup worked in the Pens' favor. While his $104.4 million contract was a massive haul, Crosby could have fetched far more, as the New Deal carried the exact same $8.7 million cap hit as his previous contract. At the time, he could have asked for the league maximum of roughly $14 million per year, but he told his agent he wanted to stay at the same salary. And Sid's superstitious nature doesn't end at the number on his paycheck, as he's famous for his rigorous routine and commitment to certain pieces of equipment. There's probably a few that are borderline crazy, but I guess we're all crazy in our own way, but uh, you're not going to have any trouble finding me at a certain time before a game. It's, it's the same every single game. Sticks are taped just so. There's a 5 p.m. peanut butter and jelly sandwich with particular brands of each. Then comes a soccer kick around, a hockey tradition a group of penguins take part in. That's so bad. Stretches performed in a certain order. And then he puts on his lucky cup, the same one he's been wearing for years. Just before the team takes the ice, there's one more routine. A special handshake with the only player who skates out after him. Unfortunately, Sid and the Penguins had to wait to get back on the ice, as the start of the 2012-13 season was postponed, due to the owners locking out the players to negotiate a new collective bargaining agreement. Sid was a regular attendee at the lockout meetings between the NHLPA and the owners, which finally concluded on January 6th, with the regular season beginning on January 19th. With the season finally underway, Crosby set the pace for scoring, totaling 31 points through the first 21 games. He stayed hot through March, recording 25 points over his next 15 games, during which the Penguins went unbeaten. But things took a turn for the worse at the end of March, when Sid took a Brooks Orpic slap shot to the mouth. Sid missed the final 12 games of the season with a broken jaw, and lost the scoring race by 4 points to Marty St. Louis. After missing the first game of the playoffs, Crosby helped the Pens defeat the Islanders in 6 games, recording 3 goals and 6 assists. In Round 2, Crosby scored a hat trick in Game 2 as the Penguins swept the Senators, setting up a third round matchup with the Bruins. Led by the outstanding play of Tuka Rask, the Bruins held the Penguins to just 2 goals as they swept them in 4 straight games. Despite being held scoreless in the conference finals, Sid finished the playoffs with 15 points in 14 games, and in the offseason, he won his second Ted Lindsay. He was selected to captain Team Canada at the 2014 Olympics, where he led the Canadians to gold. With Sid leading the way, Canada was the best defensive team in the tournament, surrendering just 4 goals in 6 games. In the medal round, they played their last 8 periods without giving up a goal, including in the gold medal game, where Crosby scored on a breakaway to give the Canadians a 2-0 lead. Returning to Pittsburgh to finish the season, Crosby played 80 games for the first time since 2010, finishing the season with 36 goals and a league-leading 68 assists. He also finished with a league-high 104 points, winning the Art Ross for the second time in his career. The Pens finished first in the Metro Division, setting up a first-round matchup with Columbus. The Penguins took the series in six, with Crosby recording six assists, but no goals. Going into their second round series with the Rangers, Sid looked to end a long playoff goal drought, which dated back to the 2013 conference finals against the Bruins. With the series tied at a game apiece, Crosby finally ended his drought, scoring a goal in Game 3, and recording two assists in Game 4, as the Pens jumped out to a 3-1 series lead. But the Rangers turned the momentum, reeling off three straight victories to take the series in seven. The Penguins' collapse prompted ownership to fire general manager Ray Shiro, replacing him with Jim Rutherford. Rutherford's first action as GM was firing Dan Bilesma as head coach and replacing him with Mike Johnston. Early in 2014-15, Crosby became the sixth fastest player to reach 800 points and later in the season scored his 300th goal. The injury-riddled Penguins snuck into the playoffs as the eighth seed in the East, led by their captain, who recorded 84 points in 77 games. After dropping Game 1 to the President's Trophy winning Rangers in the opening round, Sid scored twice in Game 2 to even the series at 1. But the Rangers were too much for the Pens to handle, as they took the series in 5 games, eliminating the Penguins in Round 1 for the first time since 2012. That offseason, Crosby captained Canada to its first World Championship title since 2007, recording 4 goals and 7 assists in 9 games. 
With the championship, Sid became the 26th member of the Triple Gold Club and the first to captain all three championship teams, as well as the first member to be a first overall pick. After the expiry of his endorsement deal with Reebok, Crosby signed a six-year deal with Adidas, joining James Harden and Aaron Rodgers as the company's newest brand ambassadors. He also launched the Sidney Crosby Hockey School back in Coal Harbor, with all proceeds going to his foundation, which is committed to providing financial support to community charities, particularly charities benefiting children. As for the Penguins, they spent the offseason undergoing a major overhaul, adding a number of offensive players, including Phil Kessel. Despite starting 2015-16 to alongside some of the world's top offensive weapons, Crosby struggled to put up points, an ongoing trend under head coach Mike Johnston. When Johnston was fired in December, Ryan Lambert of Yahoo Sports wrote an article speculating that Crosby had aged out of his prime scoring years. And Neil Greenberg of the Washington Post wrote an article about Crosby's decline, concluding he was no longer the best player in the game. But under new coach Mike Sullivan, the 28-year-old Crosby made those writers look foolish as he outscored everyone in the league from December 12th to the end of the season. The run included his 900th point his 600th assist, a stretch of 15 points in 16 games, and 6 multi-point efforts. After his slow start, Sid finished with 36 goals, 49 assists, and 85 points, including 9 game-winning goals. Scotty Bowman praised his defensive game, and Wayne Gretzky praised him for bouncing back, and argued he should be considered for the heart. After losing to the Rangers in the past two playoffs, the Pens finally took them down, winning the series in 5 games, with Sid leading the team in scoring with 3 goals and 8 points. In round two, Crosby and Ovi faced off in the playoffs for the second time, with Sid getting the upper hand again as the Pens eliminated the President's Trophy winning caps in six games. With the series win, the Penguins advanced to the conference finals for the first time since 2013. After dropping game one, Crosby scored the overtime winner in game two, as well as the game winning goal in game three. After losing the next two, Sid scored his third game winning goal in game six, setting up a decisive game seven back in Pittsburgh. The Penguins won Game 7 by a score of 2-1, and advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals against the Sharks. The Pens jumped out to a 2-0 series lead, and never looked back, ultimately taking the series in 6 games. Crosby finished the playoffs with 19 points, including the primary assist on Chris Letang's cup-winning goal, and earned the Conn Smythe as playoff MVP. For his second day with the Cup, Sid wanted to make sure he shared it with as many people as possible in his hometown. He took the cup to the local Tim Hortons, visited his hockey school, and surprised people all over Cole Harbor. He also shared a special moment with Penguins superfan Rob Drodge, who'd been flown to Halifax for medical treatment. That September, Hockey Canada named Crosby captain for the 2016 World Cup of Hockey. Sid led the tournament in scoring, with 10 points in 6 games and was named tournament MVP as Canada won the gold medal over Team Europe. With the championship, Crosby joined Wayne Gretzky and Bobby Orr as the only players to win the Conn Smythe, Hart Trophy, and Canada Cup or World Cup MVP. After the high of winning his second Stanley Cup, as well as the World Cup of Hockey, Crosby faced a bit of a setback heading into 2016-17 as he missed the first six games of the season after suffering a concussion in practice. When he returned, he scored 30 goals in his first 45 games, and later recorded his thousandth point in a game against the Jets. Sid ended the season with 44 goals and 45 assists, finishing tied for second in league scoring with 89 points. His 44 goals earned him the Rocket Richard for the second time in his career, and he was a finalist for the Hart and Lindsay, with both trophies ultimately going to rising star Connor McDavid. In the playoffs, the Pens breezed past Columbus in five games, setting up a rematch with the Capitals in round two. After winning the first two games on the road, Sid sustained a concussion in Game 3 after a cross-check to the head from Matt Niskanen. The Niskanen incident drew more media attention, but Paul Coffey also called out Ovechkin since his slash put Sid in a vulnerable position. Whatever caused the concussion, it kept Sid out of Game 4, which the Penguins won 3-2, giving them a 3-1 series lead. He returned for Game 5 and contributed an assist, but the Penguins fell by a score of 4-2. Sid also got on the score sheet in Game 6, but once again, the Pens fell to the Caps, setting up a Game 7 back in Washington. In Game 7, Crosby assisted on the series' clinching goal as the Penguins advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Senators. The team's traded wins through the first four games, with Crosby recording two goals and an assist. The Penguins broke out in Game 5, with Sid recording a goal and an assist in a 7-0 victory. But the Senators responded in Game 6, holding on for a 2-1 victory to force a Game 7. Game 7 was a double overtime epic, with Crosby assisting on the series winning goal by Chris Kunitz to send the Pens to their second consecutive Stanley Cup final, where they faced off against the 8th seeded Predators. The heavily favored Penguins jumped out to a 2-0 series lead, during which Crosby recorded two assists. 
But the Preds roared back at home, winning back-to-back -back games to even the series at two. The Pens pulled themselves together for Game 5, dominating with a 6-0 win, with Crosby recording three assists to pass Lemieux for the most Stanley Cup Finals points in franchise history. That sent the series back to Nashville, with the Penguins a win away from their second consecutive Stanley Cup. The Pens dominated again, taking the game 2-0, with Crosby playing a key role in shutting down the Preds' attack. With their second straight Stanley Cup, the Penguins became the first team to repeat as champions since the 1998 Red Wings, and the first to do so in the salary cap era. Sid also won his second consecutive Conn Smythe, becoming just the third player to do so, after Bernie Perrant and Mario Lemieux. Sid had his third day with the Cup on his 30th birthday, during which he led a parade through Halifax and Dartmouth. In an interview, Sid admitted a few grey and white hairs were cropping up, and recognized that age isn't necessarily friendly to professional hockey players. Despite those comments, it didn't appear that age had caught up with him yet, as Sid appeared in all 82 regular season games, for the first time in his career in 2017-18. The season also saw him hit a couple of personal milestones, recording his 400th goal and 700th assist. He kicked off the playoffs with a hat trick, leading the Pens to a 7-0 victory over the Flyers in Game 1. When the Flyers responded with a 5-1 victory in Game 2, Crosby took it personally, putting up a goal and 3 assists in Game 3, which the Penguins took by a score of 5-1. He followed up his Game 3 performance with a goal and an assist in Game 4, as the Penguins dominated again, winning by a score of 5-0. Philly eked out a win in Game 5, but the Pens closed out the series in Game 6, with Crosby recording a goal and two assists. In Round 2, the Pens faced the Capitals for the second straight year, but this time, the Caps finally got over the hump, winning the series in six games, before going on to win their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. Despite being bounced in the second round, Crosby had another outstanding playoffs, finishing the postseason with 21 points in 12 games. That pushed his career playoff point total to 185, tying his idol Steve Eiserman for the 10th most in NHL history. In 2018-19, Sid passed Lemieux to become the Pens' all-time leader in games played, and moved into second place on the Pens' all-time scoring list with his 440th career goal. Two days later, he became the 48th player to hit 1,200 career points and finish with 100 points on the season. In the playoffs, the Pens were swept by the Islanders, with Crosby recording just one assist. In the COVID-shortened 2019-20 season, Sid recorded 47 points in 41 games, but missed 28 games with a sports hernia. In the play-in round, the 5th-seeded Pens were heavily favored over the 12th-seeded Habs, but were upset in 4 games, during which Crosby recorded 2 goals and an assist. Due to the ongoing pandemic, the 2020-21 season was shortened to 56 games, with Sid playing in 55 and recording 24 goals and 38 assists. In the playoffs, the Pens faced off against the Islanders for the second time in three years, with the Islanders taking the series in six. Heading into 2021-22, Crosby had a couple milestones on his radar. He scored his 500th goal in February in a game against the Flyers, and later in the season, he recorded his 1400th point in a win over the Preds. He finished the season with 84 points in 69 games, helping the Pens to third place in the Metro. Heading into the first round against the Rangers, the media highlighted the possibility that Crosby, Letang, and Malkin were playing in their final postseason together, as both of Sid's long-standing teammates were scheduled to become unrestricted free agents in the summer. The series kicked off with a Penguins win in triple overtime, with Crosby recording two primary assists. The Rangers bounced back with a 5-2 win in Game 2, before Pittsburgh reeled off two straight seven-goal efforts to take a 3-1 series lead. With a goal and two assists in Game 4, Sid became the sixth player in league history to record 200 career points in the playoffs. Everything seemed to be going the Penguins' way, until the midway point of Game 5. With the Pens up 2-0, Crosby exited the game after taking an elbow to the head from Jacob Truba. In Sid's absence, the Rangers rallied to win 5-3, with the consensus being that Truba's hit, which went unpenalized, was the turning point in the game. The injury kept Sid out of Game 6, which the Rangers also won 5-3, to force a Game 7 back at MSG. Crosby returned for Game 7, and recorded an assist, but the Penguins fell in overtime, and were eliminated from the playoffs. For two months, Penns fans were left wondering if they'd seen the trio of Crosby, Malkin, and Latang play together for the last time. There were reports that Malkin was going to test free agency, but Crosby made an emergency visit to Florida to check on his good friend amid ongoing contract talks. The visit paid off, as Malkin decided to sign a four-year deal with the Pens, worth $6.1 million per season. Latang also opted to return, signing a six-year deal, also worth $6.1 million per year. With the band back together, the core set their sights on winning another Stanley Cup. The 2022-23 season started well, with Crosby recording consecutive three-point nights and back-to-back 6-2 victories. But after the strong start, the Pens entered a lengthy slump. 
Despite his team's struggles, Crosby played well, hitting a couple significant milestones with his 900th assist and 1500th point. The Pens' poor performance continued into the spring, putting their 16-year playoff streak in jeopardy. In the final weeks of the season, they were battling with the Panthers and Islanders for one of two wildcard spots in the East. But the Pens' playoff hopes ended when they lost 5-2 to the last place Blackhawks in the second last game of the season. It marked the first time the Penguins missed the playoffs since Crosby's rookie season, and the first time since Malkin and Latang joined the team. Despite his team's failures, Crosby had another strong season, playing in all 82 games for just the second time in his career, and finishing the season with 33 goals and 60 assists for 93 points. The Penguins missed the playoffs for the second consecutive season in 2023-24, but Crosby continued to rack up personal milestones. Early on, he played in his 1200th NHL game, recording an assist in a 10-2 win over the Sharks. And in April, he became the 7th fastest player to record 1,000 career assists. He also joined Gretzky as the second player in NHL history to average a point per game in 19 consecutive seasons, finishing the year with 42 goals and 52 assists for 94 points. Crosby's now entering the final year of his 12-year deal, with some wondering if he'll test free agency to chase a fourth Stanley Cup. But Sid recently affirmed that he wants to finish his career with the Penguins. According to The Athletic, Crosby wanted to delay finalizing his next deal to give general manager Kyle Dubas time to address other off-season matters. It'll be interesting to see if Sid finally asks for a raise, or if he'll stick with his 8.7 million average annual value. Let me know your favorite thing about Sidney Crosby in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel.